So last time you saw us start touring this massive hi-fi warehouse and today we're going to continue because there's several more sections that we cannot miss. Now let's go hi-fi hunting. All right, so down here, a couple more pieces in this collection. You got the 873A Barcelona speakers down here. Just massive, like, furniture speakers. They're going in a big room, and this is a good setup that you could pair with it. Got yourself a Sansui turntable. That's one of their larger turntables, the XRQ7. Coming over here, you got a Marantz stack. So you got your 2440. This is a quad adapter. Uh, we just saw one of these. Let me see if this is on so you can see what that looks like. Let's see. There we go. All lit up. So you got your four meters, you know, and it may have the cartridge in the bottom, the SQ4 cartridge that goes in that. And then down here, you got a 2235B. And we'll light that one up so you can see what that looks like. Now, these are all going to be your original incandescent lights. And then you have a 2238 model down below. So here's an example. So these are both, you know, 2230 series. This one has that silver finish down the bottom with the nut, with the buttons. And then this one has the black finish. So it's just a little difference there. And then we go over to the 3200 preamp and the amp down here, the 140 amp. So I don't know if that one is... Oh, yeah, there you go. You can see the meters just a little bit. They don't have LEDs in them or anything like that, but you can see how the meters are very prominent on the front of the Marantz there. So you would just control this as a set. Nice, very nice set right there. And then a TX3300S ruler rail. But there's one other piece that we didn't talk about here that I'm not too familiar with, but I think I have some ideas. So this is a Stax CDP. So Stax was a popular headphone company, a headphone amp company, and I haven't really seen any components by Stax. But what I'm thinking they did with this CD players, they may have worked either from a Nakamichi design or worked with Nakamichi in creating this just because of how the feet are, how the front of the CD player is, how the buttons angle down. I think it has a Nakamichi design. So if you guys know maybe more about this, you can let me know if I'm wrong or not, but it almost resembles how the Dragon turntable looks with these big feet on the on the sides. So if I was to guess, someone in Nakamichi or someone in Stacks or whatever kind of got together and made this. So that's a very interesting piece. So this is gonna be one of the racks I'm probably most drawn to. So it's gonna be all your Pioneer 70s stuff right here so you got a couple of the rack mounts for the eq and the tuners followed by a ctf 1250 this is their top of the line cassette deck to go with your spec series so you get a spec one we got a ctf 1000 another one of those cassette decks now this one's a little bit older than the blue meter so this would uh probably like a 78 this is going to be your 76 that'll go with the spec set so there's your eq sg9500 right here if you were mounting this into the rack you would actually put it right into there sit it in it screws in in, so you can load it right onto your Pioneer rack. Uh, you got an RG2 dynamic processor with the blue meters. That's one of the Fluoroscan models right there. I get the PL600 turntable. Ah, one of my favorite pieces, the RG1. We did a video on the RG1. It's a great piece, really expands your music. We got a Spec 4. I mean, look at the size of that amp. That is a massive amp. Talking about massive, look at the 909 reel to reel down here. It's going to be your 10 inch. So you see 7 inch reels on here, but actually it, it will hold 10 inch reels and looks amazing in the process. I uh, you got your more, a little bit more modern, maybe a 78 into the 80s, the SG9800 EQ. You know, there's that argument whether this one is better than your 9500. I personally prefer the 9500. A lot of people like the lights on the SA9500, or the SG9800 up here over the 95. I just like the look of the 95. Then you have one of the beach receivers here that I like. This is the SX3900, just a massive, massive receiver. But again, that fluoroscan blue, it's beautiful. I mean, you're looking at, you know, early early 80s, late 70s there with that one. That series is incredible. Down here, you get another Spec 1, and you got a Spec 2. Uh, so what's interesting is you don't usually see it, but the Spec 2 and the Spec 4 in the same place. Uh, so if you see the Spec 4 up here, goes up to 300 watts on the uh, on the meters there now we go down to the spec 2 well that's going up to 500 so this is the bigger amp and that's how you're gonna tell if you're looking between them the spec 2 is the bigger amp and what better turntable to put with that than the PL 630 look at that that's a, that's a beautiful look to that turntable couple other pieces down the bottom of course you got the 707 with an original reel it's an amazing piece my favorite reel to reel one of them at least and then even some rack mount ears so these were actually four the spec racks, you put them on the sides of the cassette decks. If you're buying the CTF-1000, you can add these on to mount them onto your spec rack. So really nice accessory there. These are very nice accessories for your spec rack. 
The stuff's just everywhere. So we got some, you got some Bose 901s. These are Series 6s with the EQ. Going down, you got your AR speakers and your Advents. You got more Pioneers. Down below, HPM 100, 200 watt versions. The CS Series Pioneer speakers. And then in the front, you got a, a CA610, another one of those. This Sansui TU 7700 tuner is pretty cool. It's missing the glass unless it didn't have glass, which actually it doesn't look like it did. That's an interesting looking tuner that I haven't seen before. SA80. 100 there integrated amp from pioneer and the au 517 integrated amp from sansui we looked at the 717 earlier got a 2230b a ca810 again and then the pioneer turntable right there i prefer the newer versions than this one but it's a very popular the pl50a and then down here 2330b so this is actually a really hefty marantz receiver and you can even tell the wood cases they did for these often fell apart because they made them a little thinner on top so if you go to pick it up you feel that See where it's moving. We got a Macintosh MX113 right here, tuner preamp. And then going across the side as I walk backwards on my knees. So looking down here, we got a Marantz 2235B with the wood cabinet, the WC22. Uh, above that, you get a realistic STA 120B with the volume knobs on the sides and a Kai GX 270D with the glass heads. Now this is really cool. Apparently this just came in. You got your NS1000 studio monitors, but you never really see is the matching mono block amps. So these right here, it, the M2 from Yamaha, this is a giant power amp that you can use to mono block these. So where they will work in stereo, you can use them as mono blocks, the Power NS1000s. And on top, a ZX9, which is also one of the rarest Nakamichi cassette decks uh, that you can find. And hey, look at these, Yamaha YH2 headphones. So this is just a great set. Like if you're putting together something, you can do some mono block Yamaha M2s and some NS1000 monitors. I mean, these things are huge. And that's nice. So there's a ton of stuff here, but one thing that I saw down the bottom that I think is nice and rare Air is going to be this remote for this Sansui SD7000 reel to reel down here that I'm not going to pull out because it's really heavy. But this is Sansui SRC1, so this is going to be a remote for the reel to reel. So just a cool find. I saw the plug sitting there, I'm like, oh, I know what's on the end of that. That's a nice piece. Another thing that's really neat over here you get the phase linear 1000 dynamic range recovery system nice piece underneath you got oh this is the oh okay this is what i was talking about earlier we may have to see that so i was talking about that akai eight track that was really nice here we have the quad version of it. This is the one I talked about earlier, the CR80DSS. So this is the quad of that Akai 8-track that we were talking about earlier. Very nice, super heavy, but a cool piece that you don't see every day. Another one you don't see every day is gonna be this Marantz Stereoscope, or sorry, Marantz Super Scope, or it doesn't say Marantz because it just says Super Scope, but they owned them. Super Scope owned Marantz is the TD48 8-track player right there. You got that uh, Tonica, another one of those computer system looking up Tonica the cassette decks, Marantz cassette deck. Now this is neat. This is the SD8000, a Marantz version of that computer cassette deck. Almost looks like a CTF from Pioneer, but look at all the buttons everywhere. That must be like a nightmare to work on, but very cool looking if you had that like early 80s hi-fi system. Going a little more vintage, the bulkier. You got the TAC A640 cassette deck, the Sansui SC3000, and then another one of the best eight tracks out there, the Pioneer HR99, which is very, very cool. Some woolen sacks, some telefunctin. This is a neat telefunctin on stereo up here. More woolen sacks, some other eight track pieces. Now going down here, this is very interesting. Uh, I've seen a couple of these. This is a receiver from MCS, the 3825. Just very digital, almost kind of like getting into that B&O look, uh, you know, where you have like, they're not touch sensitive, but they're very flat. Like you have to kind of push them in for the buttons to work and digital display on the sides. So they're a very unique piece. You rarely see them, but very cool from MCS. Cool for JC Pennies, right? Going up here, you got a couple more. You got a CD4 disc demodulator. Same thing from Sansui. So that's if you wanted to use CD4 quad, you would get one of those. And then down here, this is cool. This is a Sony SQD2020 decoder. So look at that. Look how they contrasted the colors and put those yellow meters in there. You got the Japanese made Sony knobs here where they have that bevel to them, which is really nice. So you also see some of the cheaper builds where it's like a flat knob. Underneath, you got the Quad Pioneer QX949. Another one right over here, the most popular Pioneer Quad with your quad display over there on the side. Going down, you got a couple more rotor reels. Oh, it's another remote. Let's see what we got. Oh, 
Oh, look at that, Akai RC16. That's gonna go with what looks like an Akai. That's a 280DSS for the But look, this is cool. When you see the remotes, I really like the remotes. See, I don't even look at the, I don't even look at the real to I just wanted to see the remote. Cause you see less of that. I got a real big Sansui quad. These Sansui quad receivers were enormous. So that's like a massive, I mean, it's only almost two feet wide and almost a foot tall. That's a big receiver. But on top of it, got the AN80 noise reduction unit. Another really nice piece, very contrasting color there with the blue meter. Got a Pioneer TX 9800. So this is gonna uh, add a little bit of the digital display in there, power meter wise, but it's gonna be a really nice tuner from Pioneer. Pioneer uh, Marantz 2100 tuner. They're going again closer to the 80s. The JVC CD4, the 4VR5436 quad receiver from JVC. They have a quad QC800. A lot of quad stuff in this. I mean, it's a lot of quads. So, this is a very nice amplifier. You got all your controls right here for how you want to set your balance on your four speakers you have for that. Uh, a couple little esoteric. Uh, DAX here and it looks like maybe a CD player right there that go together. Now this is a really cool piece. This is probably the rarest piece we've seen so far. Uh, the QRX 9001. This is going to be your quad Sansui. I mean, it's really big. It's a monster receiver. Very, very cool once it's all redone. This board for all these buttons here has to be fully redone. So that's a very difficult repair on that. And it's very difficult to get to, but it's a hard to find piece. Very cool. Here's another version. You got the QRX 7500A down here and the 7001, QRX 7001 for Sansui. So some more of their quad receivers. So you can see over time, this is probably your uh, first gen, your second gen, and then your third gen quad receiver from Sansui. So that's like going through the years. Hopefully I got the first two right. I think I do in time period of the quad there. Down below, we got some carver pieces. You got an interesting looking uh, FM, coupled FM detector tuner, the TX11, that's a cool piece. You got the preamp and the M5, the M1.5T, that's a great amp. It needs to be fully redone if it hasn't been done yet, but the M1.5T, very nice. It's almost like the, uh, the 500, so. C4000 control crossover preamp. Uh, and you got another carver piece in here. Maybe it's an A36. So you got NAD and ad come down the bottom. A couple GFA 545, 2535, some NAD 3220s. All kind of stuff on here. So we got a couple cassette decks, A100 TAC. Going down here, the Akai GX F60R. Now this is a door. I know it. I can feel it. Look at all those controls you didn't even know was there. This series from Akai is very nice. This year you are getting into the the, the probably mid 80s on this one, but very nice. By the wood cabinet, I even think it's a little earlier than that, but not positive. Got a lot of test equipment here. Now, I don't know anything about test equipment, but you got some Heath kits, the IM28. You got a variable voltage regulated power supply. You guys may not know, but I am not a tech. I just try to know as much as I can. This is a realistic solid state communications receiver, the D x 150a so you can get stations in from all over the place that none of them probably actually come in anymore you got four bands and then underneath i guess this is matching you have the trc 55 look at that on the air modulation so that that's a pretty cool combination i don't know everything this does but I like it. And hey, you got another one down here. That's the same, look at that. Oh, that's neat. When you move the band spread, it goes around in a circle. And then you tune across with that one. So there's actually two controls on here. Wait, it's way before me, I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoy that. That's, I think it's really, really nice. Heath kit model GR81s. Heath kit was very big in the 60s on building your own kits. And a lot of these were probably ones that, that, that someone built. Look at this one. It looks like a vintage car. I mean, yeah, that's shiny chrome that I just love that. I don't even know what this does, but that's something I'd, I'd, I'd put in a set. That's pretty cool. I like it. Over here, you got a Royce transceiver this is neat that's like a little speaker there and then you got it looks like maybe some tuning meters on there i love how they have the wood panel on the front you have done gone to the 60s at that point in the middle of this you got a 330 es the es stuff from sony is some of the best stuff out there when you get into the 90s and the early 2000s like this one you know you're not going with that vintage silver look but out of like that black 90s and 2000s hi-fi the sony es is really really good so if you've never had a sony es I would definitely recommend doing 
a system that, or even a piece like an amplifier like this. You got AB, you got your volume control over here. It's a great sounding amp. Uh, and they're not really the most expensive pieces either. So very, very cool. Now, one of the things you may not have known is back in the 70s and maybe even late 60s, Denon was actually still around, but their logo is way different. This is a Denon receiver, solid state, probably late 60s, I would say. But look at that Denon logo. Has all these little dots in it. And you got the dot in the middle, the O. One thing about these is they were definitely cheaper built back then. They weren't the brand they became. But you can feel that in the controls. But hey, if you didn't know, Denon was a Around Going over here, we have a realistic STA 65D, another Radio Shack receiver, very popular. A lot of people had these. They were like that budget to mid fi level. You got your volume control, which you can control separately, the right and the left, just by moving up these. So you can do your balance and volume all in one. And then this one is a Century Mark IV. Not a ton there on that one, except a couple Grundig down the bottom. So when we were talking about the Grundig receiver earlier, this is one of their tabletops that that was, uh, I think, built after. Oh, uh, Oh, look at that. All right. All right. So we got a couple other cassette decks up here. So we got an MCS and I just moved that one that had the giant handles. That was probably the step up. This one's super cool. The CT40 from Pioneer. It's not. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. This has one of the yellow backings. You can't really see it, but it's a nice like early 90s deck. Very reliable in that one. Uh, vintage Kenwood deck, the KX620. Then moving down, we got a Sanyo. Has your meters there, but this is going to be your very entry level. Now, when CD players first came around, Sony was all over it. So this is the CDP101. Now you can see that this one is a little bit smaller than your typical component, 17 inches. This is probably going to be more like a 12 to 14 inch. Very, very nice original Sony CD player. I think it was the first first if not one of the first ones that they ever came out with if you pick this up like the weight on it it just feels like it's made nice but i heard there might be one there might be some other ones around here so and there's two right there you never even see two together optonica here this is actually a sharp cassette deck completely identical models they just slap different brands on them and what's interesting with this one it has these little buttons that almost look like sony buttons on the front so this little red blue all these colors sony made the same kind of circular buttons on a lot of their components more cassette decks you got a Marantz 1810 you never see the SAE one. Look at this, an SAE 2. This is super neat. I've never seen that one. Look at the size. See, if people design cassette decks more like this, it'd be a better, you know, the world would be a better place. Like, look at the size of the meters on the front of this. And you got a nice record level. And you can even, you can feel the notches on that. Very nice deck. Going over here. You have a Marantz SD-1000. Super cool deck. I love the way they designed the transport there. Very nice. Going up here, you got a Pioneer 6262. These were these are great cassette decks. They look wonderful. They're silver. They match that vintage Pioneer series that I love so much. The only issue with a lot of these is the motors are coming to the end of their life at this point. So unless somebody's building a custom motor or, you know, redoing it, these are cassettes where if you do find one and you fix it up, there's a pretty good chance as soon as you start playing it, that motor's going to crap out on you. So one of the cassette decks I really watch out for, we get them from time to time, but usually I'm just selling them for parts to people who either want to put a long time into rebuilding the motor or whatnot. If you see them in the wild, you may want to watch out unless you want to do a lot of work. JVC has some big meters down on this. This is the JVC CD1920. Underneath, you go down, you got a Sanyo. It's a RD5250. Nice looking Nakamichi up here. You got a BX1. I love the way they did the cover here. Very nice. Nice and shiny. You got that like little pattern in there. You got a Sony. Sony's going to make some of the most reliable cassette players out there. The TXF two fx 210 underneath another marantz a 5010 you got your classic marantz and they even kept those buttons that were on the earlier models so that's pretty cool you got another sony here now this one you may want to get mikey check this one out this is a tamberg i think it's a 310 yep 310 over here the tambergs they were vertical so they came with like little stands on the bottom so you could stand them up with your collection so if you put this in your rack you'd have to have a little bit bigger rack but the tambergs are very popular out there they do they're a little bit harder to work on because they're made really well very collectible the tambergs are under here you got a tiac this has that finish that you see on some of the rotor rolls this is one of those finishes that over time kind of fades gets dirty because it's more of a plastic finish but you know you clean this up it'll be a nice looking uh, cassette deck got a tiac in the box here you got a nakamichi oms 1a and then on top here you got another one of those es ones so the c8 es D, any of these Sony ESDs are gonna be really, really nice. So a five disc player, this is probably one of the best ones ever made because the Sony ES stuff was made so nice. Oh, what the, we got here, uh-oh. There's nothing in it. Oh, nothing in it? It's 
It's magazines, I think. It's magazines? <laughs> oh no. Ooh, this is cool. Uh-oh, you might have got me with these. Look at this old orange headphone. Wow. Uh-oh. This is cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Home video 83. Oh, man. Look at that. Wow. Home computers. See there, Mikey? You know what that is? It's your relics. So on this rack, we got some more cassette decks, but this one's really cool to start off with the GXC 570D. Anything where it's got like a secret door, even though this one's clear, is pretty neat. I like that. There's another vertical sanding like the Tamburg we saw, but way deeper. It goes way back to the side, Mikey. If you can see that, it does go, go considerably deeper back. Around the side here, we have the computer-controlled RT3388A. All these little buttons and this very futuristic look from Sharp back in the early 80s. And actually down here, I actually still found one. It looks like that's still in the box, never used. So new old stock of the 3380. We got another, you know, one of those series I was talking about earlier, 6262, just the 82, 82, a little bit higher. A lot of people like the 9191, which is the top of the line. Going to some of Pioneer's maybe more reliable cassette decks, you go up into the Blue Line series, the CTF 650, a very popular deck. 750 was probably a little more popular, but this was a little more entry level. Great decks had those blue meters as you're playing. This is a Nakamichi 700. It's a vertical standing cassette deck from Nakamichi. Pretty cool, has that silver front and it's heavy as anything. But you see all those controls when you move that door, you can actually align, do your azimuth and pitch control, everything right in there. We'll just sit that down. <gasps> and another one from Nakamichi, I love these. This is the RX202. So this is the one that when you're playing the cassette, when it goes over to the other side of the tape, it actually comes out and flips the tape to the other side so it just gives you that visual uh aspect to your hi-fi that's really cool this is actually one of the items that i know how to fix so just because i think these are so fun i i, I had a couple that we couldn't get going that i spent some time trying to figure out how to do uh, if you ever see these i get these all the time i love love the cassette decks where it comes out and flips the tape so coming down here we got another sanyo we got another pioneer going mid 80s there another sharp but then we'll come down to these these this is pretty cool now these are really bulky but very cool so you get the Marantz 5420, you got two of them. What's nice about these is it has that like mid 70s Marantz faceplate up the top, but instead of doing it as a regular component, like, like Pioneer might've did and putting that on the front, they laid it on top and put the other controls on the top. So it could be a lay down cassette deck for the top of your rack or just easier to get to in your rack. The meters glow, just it looks amazing. They actually have some smaller ones um but very nice i definitely like those and underneath here you got a hafler 220 and then you get the matching preamp which is super nice you don't see a ton of these uh actually i, I may have seen one recently and i was surprised because you, it's rare that you see these so it's interesting seeing another but these hafler products were very nice to see they got the heat sinks on the sides uh so when you pick them up they're gonna dig into your dig into your arms there so and some some treasures on that rack all right, there's some cool stuff on this rack. So we start up here. So we saw those Marantz flat cassette decks. Now this is one where the faceplate's in the front. So this is a 5520. Same type of thing. It has those two giant meters on the front. These are very popular tape decks. Not just because of sound, but more because of looks. When you add one of these into your system, it just looks amazing. Now the other thing that is very interesting and i can't show it to you here but this is a sony psfl1 so this is a turntable that actually ejects this whole tray here ejects out and then you put your vinyl right onto this more like a cd player and a turntable they're actually pretty rare that's a nice piece a lot of these tables are very difficult to work on at this point uh so if you have one in working condition you gotta you got a treasure on your hand so that's that's really pretty cool. You got a B&O here in the box. You got yourself a Gerard turntable. You got a dual 1229. An eight track, couple more turntables down the bottom. You got some more duals, you got a 1209. So they all have that similar look. The one thing that's really cool about the duals is they have the stacker. So you can stack multiple albums. And a lot of turntables don't have those. One that probably did though is this Techniques 
1800 MK2. So a lot of times you see the 1500s, but you don't always see the 1800s. The reason I think this may have had a drop is because the dust cover is a little bit taller than normal. So techniques, they'd put that to higher dust cover and you know, the actual stick that goes in the middle to drop the records is very rare on these techniques, but uh, they did make them sometimes. So there's a lot of treasures in this and look, it looks like I've already had my hands on some of them. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> up here you get a dbx2 noise reduction system the 122 here very very nice all these you know any noise reduction is going to be nice for your tapes you got a fisher graphic eq that's actually pretty heavy this is an eq 2322 from fisher listen you can hear them going up and down like that oh yeah that sounds great this is a very very vintage kenwood you can tell just because it has that wood grain on the front so you got early 60s the KR100. That could be their first receiver, actually. And look, everybody, VCR. Toshiba, some of the best, right? For real. You have a Pioneer Craig 8 track player right here. And then you have, uh, with the, all its beautiful glass glory, the KT7500 Kenwood tuner. The Kenwood Audio D Noiser KF8011. This is an interesting piece. So, this is going to be the same type of thing as your noise reduction, the 122 up here from DBX, but it's going to be Kenwood's version. And again, you can tell by the look of the knobs that you're back into either early 70s or late 60s. Everything was just a different feel and a different look. Same with how they had the wood panels on the sides. So, it looks like a lot of noise reduction on this rack. So you have some of the TX, the AN60s. They're going to be your TX noise reduction systems. You get an EQ here from MCS. So, this this is a really nice piece. This is your Akai GXR82D. This is one, if not the best, A track player ever made. So, for as far as A track players go, in sound quality this one really does the job and it's heavy like it's a good build we recently saw the dual version of this like the quad but it had just more meters it was a little longer but this if you see this one out there and you're an a-track guy this is what you probably want to get into because very reliable akai so you're you're looking at quality and if you if you pick up one of these it's got some weight underneath you have one of my favorites the sansui ra 500 that's a reverb that's the one that's going to light up with that like colored look to the front of the dial that when you change the reverb time it like moves back and forth so reverbs are super cool and talking about the reverbs if we get down here it looks like we got one we got the sr9 from pioneer right down here so you can see under this cord here see the green down in here and how it goes layer by layer by layer so when you're playing with that it actually kind of will beat to the music depending on the level of reverb that you have flowing to it and what the heck is that? <laughs> this is this is a multi-mixing amplifier. So I'm not, I, it's multi-channel. You got one, two, three, four channels from Pioneer, your source level, you got an echo. So it's like they took a pro piece and put it into a home piece. That's a cool component. I've never seen or heard of that. Now, again, with the feel of it, you're going early 80s. So it's not like a 70s piece, but definitely an interesting piece that you don't see every day. And underneath of it, you got the, uh, that is a long name of a tuner. The NFB PLL MPX2 CT6102. So the model number is a CT6102, but I don't even know what all that abbreviations mean. It's just a lot. Going over here, we have the Sansui T60 tuner. It's a nice tuner. It looks like you got signal and tuning meters right down there. Just again, you're getting into the 80s. Same thing with his realistic EQ. A couple more of the RA500 Sansui reverbs in the corner here. And going down the very bottom, this is a JVC SEA. EQ. These are great EQs going into the 80s. Lots of bands. You got all kind of options. Just very good sounding EQs when you get into these SAEs. And then down here in the corner, you got a realistic receiver and a Fisher receiver down here that I really can't even see. I think that's just a tuner. I gotta get up. Okay. Hey, Bobby! You're here to see some cool vintage hi-fi. I am. Oh, look at that! 